Our epistle lesson today comes from 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. You may follow along in your pew Bibles on page 180. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Before I start my sermon, I would like to ask everybody here who has either been a scout, boy or girl scout, or has participated in the leadership in scouts to stand for a moment. If you can't stand, just wave at us. Boy scouts, thank you. Now, if you'd all sit down again, and I'm going to ask just the leaders to stand, boy scouts or girl scouts, anybody who's served in leadership. And I want to thank you all for your service. You raise a generation of young men and women who become the leaders of the country in the next time. And we're all grateful for what you do. Thank you. This scripture today is about darkness versus light. Darkness is scary for lots of people. If you think about it, most of us can remember when we were children, or sometimes even when we're adults, when there is something frightening about darkness. You can't see what's there. It's kind of a primal fear. Lots of movies use darkness as the trigger for a scary scene. So we know it's coming when it gets dark. As a child, I don't remember particularly being afraid of the dark. What I really remember about dark was it cut into my reading time. <laughs> so I'd hide under the covers with a flashlight and read books. Now, this is not a suggestion that anybody do that, you understand, because it made me hard to get up in the mornings when I finally got to high school and my sister was gone to college, my mother figured out the easy way to get me up. She no longer yelled, came to the door and yelled and yelled. Instead, she would bring our outdoor cat in, my cat to be exact, before she fed him breakfast, throw him in the room with me and close the door. The cat would then walk on me, meow at me, lick my nose, when that didn't work, he'd try pulling on my hair with his teeth, and if nothing else worked, he'd start chewing on my earlobe. That generally got a response. And that was why I gave up reading after dark. It just wasn't worth it. At my recent conference at Mo Ranch, though, I was reminded of how much there are times in the darkness you need a light. Mo Ranch is multi-level, in the hill country, and if you are somewhere after dark, you can't tell where the paths are. You need a light to keep from tripping and falling. Lights are good for navigating safely in the dark. In this passage, Paul definitely is unhappy. He's defending himself against complaints that had been made earlier in the passage. But he's also exhorting the church to keep going, that it does not matter what those around them are doing. Paul says that God is the light and that we bear that light in ourselves. That those who are unable to see the gospel, who are unable to hear its word and understand, are blinded by the God of this world. And I found myself wondering as I read it, what the God of this world would be today. Possibly riches. We spend more time looking for money than for God. Our power. We have lots of people 
His only interest is amassing power, so they are better and more important than others. Um, there are those who think that they deserve to have everything that you have. Um, they want to go forward and be the person that makes the decisions. And another god of this world is all of the things that we can have now. We want to have our iPads, our iPhones. I have both of those, by the way, so it's not a criticism. We want to have everything because we want it. It's pretty, it's nice, it's useful. But sometimes the pursuit of things can blind us to God. And the light we're looking for in the darkness is Christ. Christ is the light of the world. He comes to show us what God looks like. He comes to show us what the world expects of us, what God expects of us in the world. And there is no one who needs to stay in the darkness. There is light for all. God invites us all in to be his followers. In John, we know that the Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not defeat it. We live in the knowledge that we are the light and the darkness will not defeat us as we shine Christ's light on the world. As Christians, we are called to be that light. We are called to serve God in the capacity he asks us to, whether that's in the church, in the scouts, wherever. We serve Christ when we serve our fellow man. We are called to love God forever, to enjoy him and revel in what he has given us. Christianity is not supposed to be sad, nor is it, should it be ever a downer. It should not make us wonder why we are Christian. Christianity should have a component of joy. We're saved. Christ has saved us. God loves us. And that should shine out of our face. It should show every time we meet someone. They should know we are Christian by what we do and what we say. Salvation comes through Christ. And that is a gift of grace that we can't earn, but we're given freely by a God who loves us and will love us forever. So when you go out, when you go into the world as a Christian, let your light shine. Do not hide it under a barrel. Shine like these candles. Shine the way children do when they're happy. Show the world that you are one of Christ's followers. Show his love in everything you do and everything you say. Let us pray. Gracious God, make each of us your light in this world. Help us to show Christ through our actions and through our words so that all may become part of the light. In Christ's name. Amen. Let those who are able stand as we sing hymn 494, Jesus, Thou Joy of Loving Hearts. Mm -hmm.